Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to install the Kali Linux on MacBook Pro, MacBook Air and iMac so using the VirtualBox. So you can follow the same method to install the Kali Linux on Windows using the VirtualBox without wasting any time. Let's get started. Alright, now you need to download these two files. So one is VirtualBox, another one is a Call of Linux, which is the ISO. So I leave the link in the description so you can go ahead and download the both files. So now we can go ahead and click on the uh, VirtualBox and open it. So when you open the DNG file, so you're probably going to see the uh, package file. So go ahead and open the VirtualBox package file and install it. Now as you can see the installation was successful, so now close all the windows, so now go ahead and open the finder and navigate to the application. So when you go to the application folder, so you're probably going to see the virtual box is installed, so go ahead and right click on virtual box and open it. When you first open the virtual box, you can see the uh, basic interface of the virtual box manager. So then click on the new to create a new virtual machine. So under the name, we're going to use the Kali Linux. You can use whatever you want. Then leave the type we're going to be a Linux. Under the version, you can choose the uh, Debian 64 bit depending on the what type of the version you're using. So I'm using the 64 uh, bit based. So that's why I selected the 64 bit. If you're using a 32 bit, go ahead select the 32 bit Debian. So in the next section, you can see the memory management. So I recommend you to use a two gigabytes of uh, higher uh, for smoother purpose. So then go ahead, click on the continue. So now I can see as I can leave the two gigabytes. So then click on the continue. Now uh, leave the default option and create a virtual disk now and click on again create. Now we can see this option. So uh, when you see this window, so I recommend you to use a second option, which is a virtual machine disk, which is also useful uh, if you're running the uh, VMware player. Okay, then select second, select the uh, second option. So then click on the continue. So when you see this uh, window again, so we uh, leave the option as a dynamically located, sorry, dynamically located. And uh, now under the uh, storage section, so you need to use at least a 220 gigabytes or higher. So I recommend you to use a 20 gigabytes higher. So as you can see, I used a 20 gigabytes. So once it's done, go ahead and uh, create all the things. Now you can see all the settings that has been uh, changed successfully. And now uh, go ahead and right click on the uh, new virtual machine that we created and uh, to manipulate the hardware settings. Now we click, uh, right click on it and go to settings. Then click on the system under the processor section. Uh, use the processor. So depending on the cores you have. So I have the quad core. So I'm using the only one core. Okay. Then click on the display. So at the video memory section. So drag the slider to the maximum. So because 128 MB is not as sufficient, but it's okay. And the, under the acceleration, go ahead and uh, take the enable 3D acceleration. So after it's done, and uh, go ahead and click on the storage. And now we can see the controller ID. So uh, you can see the uh, small kind of the CD which has a plus sign and click on that one. Now you can see this window, uh, select a choose disk. At this time you need to navigate for the ISO which is you downloaded. So this is, uh, I put it in my desktop. So you can navigate to wherever you want it. So now you can see it's a 3.32 gigabytes. So click on the open. Now we can see it's added successfully, so then click on OK. Once all done, go ahead and click on the start to start the virtual machine. Now as you can see the virtual machine is immediately started. So now what we do is you need to uh, uh, press the mouse on the on the virtual machine so this will gonna be a prompt the message the the mouse will gonna be act on to the virtual machine so to get back to the uh, host operating system you need to hold uh, command and press here so now we can go ahead and select the graphical install and uh, now you can see some error messages don't worry about those things and it's normal and uh, yeah now we can see the uh, welcome screen of the color Linux. so uh, choose the language as default English and click on continue now choose your country so in this case I'm choose India and then click on continue so choose your uh, keyboard language so I'm going to use a British English so now we can see all the components are loading 
and let it be done. So now as you can see, uh, now you need to configure the network. So I'm going to leave the host name as the Kali and then click on the continue. Now here, uh, leave the domain name and click on again the continue. Now here you need to set the uh, root password. Since the username is root, as you can see at the top of the message, you can see you need to set a password for root, which means the username is called a root, which is a system administrator account. So you need to keep the password for that one. So uh, you set the password, uh, I recommend you to use uh, uh, very strong characters, so then click on the continue. Now you can see it's immediately starting uh, detecting the disks. And now when you see this uh, partition disk page, so uh, use uh, entire disk and now we can see the uh, virtual hard disk which is a 22 gigabytes that we created earlier. Select that disk and click on continue. Now select all files in one partition and click on continue. Now we can see the uh, two partitions has been created. One is ext4 file system, another one is a swappable storage. So then click on the finish uh, partitionizing and uh, make sure click on the S yes to, to make the changes to the disk. Then click on continue. Now we can see the uh, Kali Linux will going to be installed onto the uh, virtual disk, and it will take a time depending on the writing speed of the hard disk. So I'm going to be fast forwarding for you. Uh, once it's done, I'll be back with you guys. Uh, when you see this uh, package manager, so go ahead, click on the no, and then click on the continue. Now you can see the package manager is configuring and let it be done. Now as you can see the grub library started installing onto the hard disk and uh, now we can see the message to install the grub loader onto a particular partition. Now we need to choose S because as you can see they installed the Grubler to the master boot record so don't worry you just select the yes because uh, the virtual hard disk can be treated as the MBR so select yes and then click on the continue. Now choose the uh, second ones which is a hard disk so which is a slash there slash SDA and then click on the continue. Now we can see the grub loader will going to be installed onto the uh, virtual disk and uh, as you can see the installation is almost done and it's also completed. Uh, now click on the continue and now this will going to be remove all the uh, packages that are connected and if you are using the CD-ROM it will be prompt to remove the CD-ROM. Now as you can see it's almost done and it's restarting and uh, now we can see the uh, bootloader so then click on uh, then press enter so to boot into the Kali Linux so that's it and uh, installing the Kali Linux is successfully done and this is how we can install the Kali Linux using a virtual box and I know uh, this uh, uh, the host operating system is not supported fully graphically in terms of graphical is not supported so now you can see the half of the screen only so now we can see the welcome screen so at the username so you need to type the uh, root so which is the administrator account uh, type the root and press next and type the uh, password so which you are uh, added at the setup so then click on the uh, sign in now we can see the call linux we're going to be uh, boot uh, into the uh, desktop mode so I'm going to put uh, this into a full screen mode to show you. So as you can see there is a lot of a black space that is covered the screen since it is not a fully optimized. So you can see the OS, uh, sorry, the operating system which is not a fully covered. 
uh, the screen. So I'm gonna be show you how to fix that uh, problem in the uh, upcoming in the next video. So stay tuned to my channel, and uh, yeah, we're gonna post it shortly. And uh, now we can see this is the basic interface of the uh, Call the Linux. So that's how we can install the Call Linux. It's a very easy. So we can do the same process using VirtualBox on Windows. Yeah. And now you can see all the things is working, and uh, that's how we can done. And uh, yeah, thank you for watching this video, and uh, I hope you like this video. Please hit the thumbs up button down there, and uh, subscribe for more videos like this. And as always, uh, stay tuned to my channel for a lot of updates. And thank you for watching. Until then, bye bye.